As I mentioned in the previous video, round-robin is a scheduling algorithm of choice in most operating systems because it provides a very good response time for interactive processes. But in an operating system, besides interactive processes, you also have, for example, batch processes, uh, processes that should be executed in the background uh, and uh, you should uh, be utilizing those processes also to keep the CPU busy. So, in other words, uh, the type of processes in a system, uh, in an operating system, vary. Therefore, uh, you cannot uh, pick one uh, scheduling algorithm and say, uh, this uh, is the best for all processes in the system. That's why we come up with the idea of multi-level uh, queues. So, we take the ready queue and actually partition it into several separate queues. Uh, for example, you have uh, foreground processes uh, for the interactive uh, processes, the foreground queue for the interactive processes, and the background queue for the batch processes. Remember, the interactive processes have short CPU bursts, and very frequently they have I.O. Uh, uh, bursts, whereas for the case of background processes, uh, we have uh, very long CPU bursts, and seldomly we have the uh, I.O. bursts. So, uh, one thing you can do is uh, you select what type of a process uh, that is, and put it in the corresponding queue, and it's always in uh, that queue. And for each queue, then you can say, for example, since you want interactivity in the, for the processes in the foreground queue, we use round-robin scheduling, and we know that SCFS provides us uh, very good CPU utilization. Therefore, for the background processes, you can say, uh, select uh, the uh, first come first served or FCFS uh, scheduling algorithm. Uh, but then still you have a single CPU and two different types of processes in two different queues. So how much of the CPU time should I give to foreground queue and how much to the background queue? One thing you can do is you can have fixed priority scheduling between these two queues. Like uh, for example, you can say interactive processes should uh, use the CPU uh, when uh, they're available because we want more interaction, uh, so we want uh, lower response times. So you can say foreground queue is always prioritized compared to the background queue. But in this case, these this low priority queue, which in this example happens to be the background processes, they may starve if, for example, there's even a single interactive process in the system. It would always have a higher precedence, higher priority compared to hundreds of other uh, background processes. And the background processes never get to uh, use the CPU because it's always that single uh, interactive process always stealing the CPU time. Another thing, another uh, approach could be rather than giving fixed priority between uh, the these queues which will uh, result in starvation, instead you say, well, I will reserve this much of my time to uh, say foreground processes, say 80% of the time to uh, foreground processes and the remaining 20% to background processes. That's also a possible approach, but what if the uh, ratio of the foreground and the background processes vary? How do you adjust for that? That becomes a problem. So, uh, in this, uh, uh, especially the fixed priority scheduling, you can have uh, such several uh, different priority queues. And if you're using fixed priority, then you will, for example, say system processes always take precedence over interactive processes because these are more important. 
uh, and interactive processes take more uh, higher precedence or higher priority compared to interactive editing processes uh, then lower priority is the batch processes and the lowest priority in this example sorry for the example this is from the textbook otherwise you know at both university the student has higher uh, priority by the way uh, it really happens to be that way in our GPU server uh, at Kandili uh, but here in this example the student processes had the lowest priority that would mean in such a system the student processes would typically starve as I said if you take the uh, second approach here by giving each one some time slice then you can say the system processes say take 20% of the time interactive processes take uh, another 20% interactive editing take 15% whatever you can just uh, distribute the uh, CPU time between the queues that could be one option but still as I said if the uh, mix of the processes changes in the system some of these queues might be heavily loaded whereas some others might be lightly loaded so still it wouldn't be a fair and uh, proper execution so a better approach is the multi-level feedback queue which is based on the previous one we discussed but it's an improvement on that so now we still have those several queues but we allow the processes to move between the queues and this is actually how you can implement aging remember the problem in uh, in uh, priority queuing was that the ones with the lower priority would starve so we said a solution to that would be increase the uh, priority of processes that have waited in the queue for a long time which is called aging so you can implement aging this way by moving the process from say a lower priority queue to a higher priority queue depending on how much it has waited in the system so the multi-level feedback queue scheduler is defined according to for example the number of queues how many queues do you have in your system uh, for each queue, which scheduling algorithm you're using? Is it round robin, FCFS, SGF, uh, SGF, shortest remaining time first? What is it? Uh, how do you promote a process between the queues? Promoting a process means moving the process from a lower priority queue to higher priority queue. According to what do you do that? Also, just the inverse of this. How do you demote a process from a a higher uh, priority queue to a lower priority queue and also uh, determine which queue a process will enter when it first enters the system and when that process uh, needs service so here is an example of what we have just discussed in the previous slide for example here remember we said uh, one of the defining factors is the number of queues in this one we have three queues we said uh, which scheduling algorithm is used for each queue well in this example we say for the first two we are using round robin and for the third one we are using first come first served and also uh, the quantum lengths between these two are different how do you de uh, define uh, for example the motion well according to uh, for example uh, what we're going to discuss here actually that is uh, the time quantum uh, elapses but still the process has not executed so the basic and in this example you don't uh, have uh, promotion there's only demotion but when the process leaves when it comes back it will always start from here so let's explain it better uh, the idea here is actually when it process enters the ready queue give every process the chance to be an uh, interactive process uh, give it the chance uh, to complete its cpu burst hopefully in a short time quantum 
a quantum of 8 milliseconds. Okay, so each process starts here. If the process completes its execution in 8 milliseconds or less, it will leave the system, fine. And the next time it comes back, it will again enter from here. However, if the process has a longer CPU burst, okay, this is not as interactive I thought in the beginning. So it has already got a time quantum of 8 milliseconds, but rather than taking it back here and uh, bringing it back to the same queue, we move it, we demote it to uh, another queue, which is still round robin, but with longer uh, time quantums. Okay, so it will wait here. <coughs> when it gets its turn uh, for a time quantum of 16 milliseconds, hopefully it completes in 16 milliseconds and leaves this uh, ready queue. And when it comes back, it will again start from here. But if still it cannot complete, well, this is even worse than I thought. I gave the process 8 milliseconds, couldn't complete in 8. I gave it 16 more, and it couldn't complete in 24 milliseconds. So this looks like this is a batch process. It was not uh, an interactive process. So you move it to the last queue, which works as first come first served. And when it completes from here, still in the next round, it will start from here. Maybe the process was working like a batch process for some time, but later the, there are some changes. For example, you were doing a simulation. During the calculation phase of the simulation, you don't have much I.O., you have a lot of CPU processing, so you have very long CPU bursts, so it would go with FCFS. But once it, once it completes its CPU burst and the results are ready, simulation is over, now it has to either display the results or write them to the disk, to a file. So uh, it might change its uh, behavior and now it may turn, for example, to an interactive process, for example, if it's trying to uh, display or plot uh, the results. So this way, for example, we can have a multi-level feedback queue.